Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. Today we're gonna to be talking about what does the IT operations manager do? We're gonna be looking at their, at their roles and their responsibilities and really what they get up to on a day-to-day -day basis. We'll check out what they do right after this. Hey, my name is Emilio. I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And today we're talking about the operations manager, the person responsible for a number of different areas in technology in a business. So as the name suggests, the operations manager is pretty much responsible for all of the day-to-day -day operations of IT, of technology, of systems in a business. They're gonna be looking after perhaps the help desk, the service desk, level ones, level twos, level threes, desktop support, and also your system admin, system engineers, your network guys, and really all of the backend infrastructure in a business. In some places, the operations manager may have more of a defined role that are you know, essentially being responsible for just the day-to-day -day operations of the uh, perhaps the, the, the staff, right? So the staff out in the business, looking after the technology, making sure that the computers are working, making sure that the systems are working, etc. But in larger places, you're generally gonna have the operations manager looking after all of the backend infrastructure as well. So they're gonna be looking after the servers, the networks, the storage, uh, and perhaps even security also. So really I'd break them down into three different categories. They're responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the help desk or the service desk. So these are the, essentially the level one people who would get phone calls coming in either from internal, from their staff, or from customers, if they're dealing with external customers, uh, for basic um, troubleshooting of technology issues. Uh, my printer's broken, I've you know, locked out myself from my computer, I need some new software, those sort of things. So they may be responsible for looking after a team of help desk and service desk operations, uh, from a basic level one perspective. Part of that you get then included the level two guys. So something like the desktop support your IT analysts. So these are the people who probably go out into the floor and actually fix people's computers, uh, make sure the th systems are up and running, um, update operating systems, do those sort of things. Uh, and that would work very closely with your next level, which would be your level threes, which are your system guys, your network guys, your storage guys, and potentially your security guys as well. So working very closely with them around your server infrastructure, perhaps going out to the data centers, right? So the operations manager may also be responsible for data centers, right? Um, in a business themselves, you may have comms cabinets, you know, server rooms full of servers and network equipment. And you might may also have alternate sites where you have equipment sitting in a different location, perhaps in a data center, in a third party data center, uh, and that responsibility may fall under the operations manager and all of the staff that report into the operations manager also. All of the servers in a uh, business require regular maintenance, regular uptime. Uh, so the operations manager under their responsibility will be looking after all of the server fleet, all of the uh, physical servers. If they've got virtual servers on premise, if they've got servers, virtual servers on the cloud, for example, if they're using a, a third-party software cloud provider such as AWS by Amazon or Azure or something similar, they're gonna be responsible for making sure that all of those servers are kept updated, regular patching, regular maintenance, making sure that the, um, you know, the, the, the spyware, the antivirus, the protection of those servers is uptime and running reliably. So making sure that their team are regularly um, reviewing those servers, keeping them patched on a monthly, on a quarterly basis as well. On top of that, you've also then got the back-end um, virtualization uh, hardware, your hosts running, for example, hypervisors, so they're gonna be looking after tools like VMware um, or Citrix or even Hyper-V, uh, those sort of scenarios that look after all of the VMs, the virtual machines within them, looking after those and maintaining and patching those uh, servers and hosts also. And obviously on your servers, you've got things such as uh, your file servers running, so you're gonna be looking after the file servers, but also perhaps some email servers. So whether you've got emails running on premise, for example, through Exchange, or whether you have your emails running on the cloud, such as Office 365, responsibility of email management and the, uh, the back and forth mail, 
between the business is also under their responsibility. Looking after all of the storage that all of these servers and all of these hosts communicate with. So the SAN, the NAS, you know, you're looking at the enterprise grade storage solutions, making sure that your storage admins or your systems admins maintain your servers, uh, maintain your storage, maintain the, the LUNs, the, the, the SIF shares, the SMB shares, the NFS shares that all they reside in, and really being the overarching operations person that looks after the whole lot, make sure that it all connects, you know, connects correctly, um, liaising you know, directly with your systems admins, your storage guys, to make sure that the capacity is accurate, right? Making sure that there, there is enough capacity on your storage, when there is not enough capacity, it will be the operations manager's job to look at updating that capacity via you know, raising quotes with third vendors, those sort of things. Making sure that all of the backups are running, making sure that all of the systems are running, you know, making sure that they're um, monitoring the logs, monitoring services as they go down, as they come up, making sure that the network um, you know, links into customers, into different locations are working, maybe between sites, making sure that all of that network connectivity is working. So they're gonna have reliance on some existing monitoring system to check that, get their team to check that on a day-to-day -day basis, make sure that that is running. On top of backups and monitoring, you've also got a larger responsibility around disaster recovery. Uh, they may be either the chairman or a member of the disaster recovery board, may be responsible for writing up the, disaster, the, the DRP, the disaster recovery plan, making sure that the business knows what to do from a technology perspective, if a disaster happens. So they may be working very closely with the DR plan, with other aspects, other departments in the business, working closely with HR, working closely perhaps with finance, with senior directors, uh, with that DR plan, and tie it very closely to the BCP, which is the business continuity plan as well. They're gonna be side, side by side tied in together. So the operations manager really looks after that component. Depending on the business itself, the operations manager may also be responsible for all of the mobile phone um, procurement, the mobile phone development, the, the management of all of the mobile fleet. So if staff have got mobile phones, uh, they may be responsible for looking after those. Uh, if they've got tablet devices, uh, you know, such as an iPad or an Android tablet, the responsibility of those uh, devices, mobile device management, MDM, uh, all would fall under their suite. On top of that, uh, the business themselves has got printers, they may have projectors up on the roofs, for example, in meeting rooms, conference phones, um, even the phones on everybody's desks, uh, such as you know your, your, your standard desk phones, if you've got VoIP solutions, uh, they're all gonna fall under their responsibility. And then you've got the general procurement. So the procurement is essentially following up with vendors, you know, for example, discussing it with your vendors, uh, equipment that you want to purchase, organizing quotes, organizing POs, um, negotiating prices with your vendors, um, organizing meetings for your vendors to come out, run trials, demo their software, organize trials to be installed in your equipment, uh, to be able to, you know, you know, perhaps provide a, um, a business case to senior directors, senior management on the procurement of some new software or some new hardware. On top of vendor management, they, are, they also are responsible for essentially contract management. So the operations manager may have their own IT team that reports into them. If they, if they need requirements or, or have requirements for staff from external places, they may be responsible for dealing with these contractors, bringing consultants in to do day-to-day -day work. You know, I need a security guy for a day or I've got a project, organizing PMs to come in, organizing the right resources to come in and managing them. So they're gonna be looking after, not only from a vendor perspective, but they're gonna be dealing very closely perhaps with third party um, you know, providers to be able to give you the IT support that you need to make sure that your operations are running smoothly. And then there's all the networking components um, from an infrastructure perspective that falls under their domain also. So looking after the switches, the routers, the firewalls, etc., and the overall security of an organization. Uh, so having a team of, for example, network specialists, network engineers that look after um, the day-to-day the -day management of the switches, logging into the switches, making sure that the ports on the switches are configured correctly, uh, making sure that there's certain subnets, the, the VLANs are accurate. Uh, they also could be responsible to look at the IP subnetting, you know, the overall design of how the IPs are structured and set up. The routers, if there's multiple routers in the business, whether they're communicating all internally, whether they're communicating out to 
uh, different routers and perhaps in different offices or into customer sites, making sure that those routes are correct, uh, making sure that the correct routing protocols are used, that you've got the shortest length, that the security is accurate. Um, the, the behind that is then going, all the traffic will go via your firewalls. So ensuring that your firewalls are configured, are secure, that only the relevant traffic, the relevant ports are open or closed to be able to allow the traffic that you need to come through. Um, obviously, if you've got something like a DMZ or a DMZ, uh, making sure that all of the traffic in there is secure enough uh, so that it doesn't interfere with your internal network if it's external facing. So really anything network related falls into their domain. Um, out of that, you then got all the security. Um, so as, as a you know, as a standard network engineer, a part of their role would be a security engineer also, whether that is taken on from a network guy or whether there's a dedicated security guy, uh, making sure that all the security is up to date and accurate uh, in a business. Uh, you wanna make sure that all of your firewalls, as we, as we discussed before, are security conscious, right? You don't wanna just have everything open, you wanna close things down. Um, do you need things such as proxies in place? Do you wanna have the latest and greatest antivirus running correctly. Um, really anything security related would fall under their domain. Um, you know, if they've got Active Directory running, if a business has Active Directory running, making sure that um, the, the policies are set up correctly via group policy, making sure that the DNS is set up correctly, and then, we, and then within Active Directory, making sure that there are appropriate security groups and that only the users can access the data that they require. Uh, we discussed before that their responsibility falls into file server management. So the file server, which would tie in directly to Active Directory, has a number of folders, a number of files you know, inside of it. You've got HR data, you've got um, finance data, you've got operations data, you've got senior management data, making sure that that is only allowed for appropriate uh, users. You don't want to have a file server that is completely open. And we touched a little bit on project management. Now, a lot of departments um, in a business may have project managers already allocated. You know, a business may already have a team or, or, or teams of project managers. The IT department may already have specialized project managers in-house, but if they don't, very often uh, from what I've seen is the operations manager may put on a hat of project manager dependent on what that project is. So if there's, for example, a data center migration, they need to you know, move equipment from one data center to, to another, rather than that operations manager going out and getting some third party help, if they do have the skills already in house and they've got some project management experience, perhaps that operations manager can become the PM for that particular project, right? So they could be responsible for writing out the project plan, doing the communication with the business, with the vendors, with your customers, making sure that they're aware of outages, of you know where the phase of the project is sitting at also. So the real three areas that I said before that the operations manager really would fall into uh, in terms of their management would be looking after the help desk, right? And the service desk guys, the day-to-day -day running of the show, right? Uh, then you've got your device management. So looking after all of your servers, making sure that you're looking after all of your desktops, your laptops, your mobile define, your, your mobile devices, those sort of things. And then the overall infrastructure, all the backend networking, the switching, the 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 hyper you know uh, hypervisor um, server infrastructure, all of that would fall under their domain. So that is really it in a nutshell. Well, it's not really a nutshell, I did go into a little bit of detail, but really in summary, the operations manager is responsible for all things operational in a, uh, in a business from a technology perspective, making sure that everything is running smoothly, making sure that the infrastructure is kept up to date, is relevant, is um, updated, it's you know, not running out of warranty, it's patched, et cetera, et cetera, making sure that your staff are happy from an IT perspective. Um, on top of that, they're also, Obviously, if they've got staff reporting into them, they're gonna be responsible from a management perspective to mentor and lead their staff, day-to-day -day meetings with staff, you know, perhaps one-on-one -on -one meetings, be involved from a, you know, a, a recruitment perspective, you know, going out and recruiting staff, um, doing disciplinary uh, actions with their staff as, as needed, building them up, having you know, salary negotiations, doing all that sort of stuff with their staff also. So that is my summary for an IT operations manager. I would love it if you commented below. Let me know your thoughts. If you think that I got anything wrong or if you want to add anything to it, I'd love to hear what you have to say. But please look thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and uh, we will talk to you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel Digital by Computing just on the button there for more videos.